Hey guys, what's up? Eddie Aho here with KissAndLog.com. All right, so tonight's my Friday night, and I thought it'd be a good night for a story time. So I'm going to tell you a story about a genius, and this could be, you know, fact show. It could have some, it could have some facts, and it could have some uh, fiction, and it could be just an assortment of both. But I'll just go ahead and tell you this story. But let me go ahead and tell you this story. And you guys can decide what you think is fact and fiction. Maybe leave your comments below what you think. So, this man here, okay, Michael Inglehart, uh, worked for LT Spice. I say worked for LT Spice. Maybe some of you are not aware that he's no longer there. He's been gone for about three years, okay? So, if you do know about him, if you do know about LT Spice... So you, you're probably aware that Analog Devices bought LT Spice in 2017, right? Okay, so now back in 1999, LT Spice was released. That's a simulation software for those that may not know. Uh, now, okay, some people call it the de facto standard in simulation software now. Back when I started in engineering many years ago <laughs> the de facto standard was p spice but they're bought by a big company and it kind of got buried and so it's still around and it kind of made a resurgence a little bit i think it's used in a cadence i believe but anyway it was one a de facto standard until they got bought well now analog devices by lt so we don't know what's going to happen to LT Spice. Now, one thing I could say about it, why I think it's dying, is that version 17 came out, right? The X511, Roman numeral 17. That was a major release. And when did that happen? 2016. I mean, like I say, fact fiction. As far as I can tell from my research, I'm trying to give as many facts, but we don't know how much of this might be fiction, so let me know. Give comments below, clarify, adjust, rectify. <laughs> and yes, I'm sitting here because uh, I thought it was a good time to tell a story and and just uh, talk a little bit. I'm going to try to cut out some of the stuff. I've done this twice before. Uh, so this is my third time, so I'm going to make it shorter, okay? You probably can't believe that at this point, right? <laughs> anyway, so Michael Inglehart is a genius who wrote a SPICE program, a simulation program. Now, we call it SPICE. It's kind of like back in the day when people took those portable tape players and everybody called them a Sony Walkman or a Walkman, which was a Sony product. And if you had a tape a portable tape player, everybody said, oh, you got a Walkman? And you're like, yeah, it's really a Hitachi, but yeah, it's a Walkman. <laughs> because they made that big splash and they kind of took over the market and then everybody else played catch up. And so it was just one of those names for the product that was actually a Sony name. But, you know, I think you get my drift, right? So Spice, that was actually a program written by Berkeley uh, University. Well, University of California in Berkeley. Uh, there's a bunch of universities in California that go by that University of, you know, California and where, like UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles. That's, I, I went my final year of engineering there. <laughs> so anyway, that's the way the school system works in California. That's one of the university systems, okay? So Berkeley they uh, came out with this SPICE program. It was a big splash. And SPICE, it's capitalized, all capitalized, and it stands for, what is it? A simulation program with integrated circuits emphasis. I think that's what it is. So uh, it's a mouthful. That's why everybody calls it SPICE. All right, so when simulation tools came out after that everybody just kind of called them spice even though they weren't like lt spice it's not berkeley based so here's the deal berkeley 
took that kernel, that program, and it was written in Fortran, I believe. So that's the program I learned back in college. So you can kind of tell when I went to college. <laughs> so anyway, uh, Fortran was like basic plus is today. It's like a, it was like a software, high level programming software, but it was meant for science. It, it you know the the language was spe you know specifically written for science type stuff, math, and so that's why they used it. Fortran it made sense. Anyway, so people, other companies would buy would buy the uh, the patent or whatever, buy the rights to use their their engine, and they would put the dashboard, the the wrap the car around it. You know, so you might have a car that looks like a Cadillac or a Volkswagen, but inside the engine was the same. Okay, now what would happen is some companies, these companies would also add things to that engine so they could brag and say yeah we have berkeley spice but we also add this to it but really the biggest thing they added well maybe maybe those are the biggest things but the thing that made them look so different from each other was the interface okay lt spice you guys know that have ever used it it's very it's very volkswagen-y <laughs> there's no frills so it does take a little bit more time to learn than, say, like a program like MicroCap, the one I've been kind of telling everybody to get because it's free. It used to cost 4700 bucks. The guy retired, and now it's free. Okay, I saw one guy in LT on an LT forum. He Somebody said, hey, MicroCap's free, and he goes, ah, I don't want to use a copycat. It's like, dude, they're totally different programs. They're That was 4700 bucks just a couple years ago, and LT Spice has been free forever. Okay? That's why, obviously, LT Spice has grown so fast. It's free. Hey, I'll take a free freebie, right? I've had it on my computer for years. I don't use it that much, but over the years, I have used it quite a bit. So, you know, I've, I've used it quite a bit, I guess, but not very often, if that makes sense. I was actually VP of an en uh, engineering at a small company, and I had a young engineer who was, man, he was... He impressed me. He wanted to do this converter, and I thought, wow, that's really challenging. It's going to be really efficient, high-frequency switching. And he was running into some problems, and he was like, I don't get it. And he finally came to me. He did everything on his own, but he finally came to me. And he says, man, I, I'm lost. He goes, the simulation software doesn't show that I should have this problem, but yeah, I'm having this ringing problem, so I'm lost. I and, he, and we understand parasitics. You put the inductance of your circuits, your capacitances, and all those things, you build them into your schematic. That's why a lot of times when you're doing a board layout and you want to use one tool to do your simulation, your board layout, and everything, it's kind of difficult because every part would have to have all those, all those parameters for simulation. Plus, when you're doing a real simulation, a good simulation, you'll have parasitics in there. You go, well, I got some, I got 10, 100 milliohms here of resistance, and I got a couple of microhenries here, a couple hundred nanohenries here, or, you know, so you add these parasitics in your circuit, okay? He thought he had done that, and he still couldn't get the results. So we went and bought him beige bag, uh, the owner. I went to the owner and said, hey, can we get this guy beige bag? That was a lower cost a, a simulation program written on Berkeley uh, engine, okay? He got that software, simulated the circuit, built the schematic the same way, simulated it, sure enough, he saw the ringing where it was. You know what it turned out to be, part of the problem, was one of the diodes he had in there was a normal diode package. He ended up having to get a diode that's made where it's almost upside down, where the leads come out the bottom of the package, and the inductance of the lead frame made all the difference. And his simulation actually showed that once he got something else. Now, one thing I've learned with LT Spice is that uh, some of the inductors are like ideal inductors. So you have to go in there, they'll default with some resistance, the model turns it into a Norton current source, so you have to put zero ohms in there so that it uses it as an inductor instead of a, a Norton equivalent, and then you put your parasitics around it. That's from what I understand, and like I say, I, I don't use LT Spice a lot, so, all right, so back on track. Um, this guy, he wrote his own program from scratch, and so that's crazy. 
the guy's a genius, right? And anybody that's used LT Spice, it's I mean that's no that's no trivial thing. So and you know lots of people use it now. Okay, well when Analog Devices bought it a couple years later in 2020, he was gone. So people are like wondering, like, well, what happened? Did he leave? Did he retire? I mean, the guy could retire. He's got to have his pockets full because he's been the man at LT Spice. I've gone to a few of his seminars, and it's always awesome because he actually goes to his own seminars and throw, you know, it's really cool. So, uh, yeah, that's been an awesome thing. So, as a matter of fact, when I worked at one defense contractor, they the the VP of engineering didn't want to send us the next year because he said, well, you guys just went last year. So I asked LT if they could do like, you know, an intermediate course instead of the beginner course they always do. And so they said, yeah, sure. Mike agreed that he would make it a little bit more advanced. So that was cool. And I think that's when I got this shirt. So, <laughs> so it was pretty cool. Anyway, um, it was, it's, he, the guy, he didn't leave because he was bored, okay? And the reason I know that, because he works at another company now. He's been there for three years. He's developed another spice program. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy, right? Okay, before we get into that any further, I just want to talk a little bit about, um, you know, some people think, well, linear technology, they, they can, analog devices, they would not get rid of LT Spice because, God, look at all the chips they sell. And I've even seen some engineers say, hey, I've designed all my circuits, my DC-DC converters using their chips. So, geez, I, you know, our com my company alone has bought, you know, X number of chips, and that's, that's serious money. But guys, um, you can use any, you should be able to use any simulation tool and simulate your converters, your DC DC converters. You don't need to use the now LT when you download their chips. I'm going to show you their software, okay? And then I'm going to show you the difference between the new software that Mike's designed. All right. Now you'll see it's different. It's much different. <laughs> it's it looks very similar, but it's it looks to me like it's going to be so much powerful so much more powerful okay so um i have tina on my computer because when i do texas instrument stuff if they have a model that's on tina then i'll just do that now also uh, and i think texas instruments is now doing it for simplest or symmetrics symmetric slash sim Simplest, I think is what they call themselves. That's actually two different companies. They kind of merged together uh, to come up with the product in 2001, I believe. So a couple years after Mike start, uh, released his software. S Symmetrics is kind of like what Mike did. They designed their own. A bunch of engineers got together from what I understand. Simplest got together because they wanted to design simulation tool for power supplies. So... Power supplies are very difficult because there's a lot of discontinuities. So, you know, inductor goes saturates the, the light, you know, instead of ramping, all of a sudden you're going vertical. When you're dividing by almost zero or close to zero, you're going to go discontinuous, right? I mean, as an example. So there's ways that you can try to push the software through that so it kind of fools it so it doesn't, but they get hung up, right? You guys ran into that problem before. Mike at LT tried to make his software so it wouldn't do that. He didn't use Fortran, I don't think, and he didn't use Berkeley Spice. He wrote his own. And so he wrote code to try to make it not discontinuous. But I think there, there's still some issues there. So when digital uh, simulations came along, people are going, wait, our analog and our digital circuits are starting to converge. Then they came out with mixed mode simulation, so the analog spice machine could also simulate the digital logic. Well, now that the digital stuff has gotten so much more complex and is becoming more and more integrated with analog power, the that's so much more important. And the so-called mixed mode, I don't think it's going to get it. So Mike's new software is supposed to do that easily, no problem. It's written. Uh, to do that 
In fact, what Mike, I think, was quoted saying, uh, something to the effect, I'm going to paraphrase probably, but something pretty close to saying, if he knew 25 years ago when he wrote LT Spice, what he knows now, then, you know, you would have had Q-Spice, the new program he has, okay? So Q-Spice is 25 years of knowledge and experience, and how can I make this better? That's what he did. So another company, Corvo, hired him and said, hey, we need a new program. Now here's the thing. They have kind of a different spin than, than LT Spice or even analog devices. Uh, they have transistors, you know, where LT Spice and, and analog devices are doing integrated circuits. So a bunch of stuff all integrated together, right? Where these guys are doing discrete stuff. So they need to simulate JFETs, MOSFETs, silicon carbide uh, FETs, or GAN FETs. They want to simulate those to the point where engineers have confidence using that simulation tool that those things are being simulated correctly, right? So now you have a tool, or before he didn't really have a lot of emphasis to do that. Now he does, okay? So now, you know, LT Spice is going to look like the, you know, it's, it's going to, this new Spice program is going to blow it away. <laughs> so, because of that, that's another reason why LT Spice can go. So LT Spice, they haven't come out with a major version since Analog Device Bottom. They've come out with revisions like they always do, you know, small little updates, but they haven't come out with a major revision since, you know, before LT Bottom. So once LT Bottom, they haven't done it. Now, can you imagine a guy who is so, that has the you know, the energy to write a whole new program and spend three years in development. Can you imagine that guy working for LT Spice, being bought by analog devices, thinking like, man, I'm gonna have all these really cool parts from analog devices, because analog devices is one of the premier analog companies. It's like, wow, look at all the goodies they have. The, 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 the amount of parts, the different variety of parts they have and the really hardcore analog uh, parts they have, he's probably thinking like, man, I'm going to be busy again. He's probably getting bored. But now he's like, wow, now I got a whole store of parts that I get to make a library of components for. Like I can start making all these models. They're all behavior based, right? So I don't know how many nuts and bolts, how many transistors and gates and all that stuff are inside that box uh, i've i've busted lt's chops for for years and i kind of stopped but anyway for a long time when i am working a defense contractor i really need to be able to simulate that part and know that over temperature and this and that 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 part that that let's say the drive out out of pin whatever is not going to change that i i know the input and pins the output and pin, i know what it can do you know but they don't want to share those things. That was the reason why I think they developed LT Spice in the first place, so they could keep their secret recipes secret. Other companies like TI and National Semiconductor, they would share me stuff like that. Sometimes they'd say it's for your eyes only. Even though we have an NDA with your company, this is still for your eyes only. No one else on your team. I'd say, okay, sure. That didn't happen very often. A lot of times they say, yeah, we have an NDA with you. Here's here's what you need to know. Or you could just commonly find it because you could download their model to put it in any kind of uh, spice or simulation program that you could translate to your program, which usually isn't that big of a deal. So anyway, analog devices, they've been using uh, simplest symmetrics for their simulation tool. Because most companies didn't write their own simulation tools to provide their customers. Some of them design them for their, you know, to design their chips for their hardcore engineers doing the chip designs, but that's not meant for spice circuit simulation type stuff. So those things they would get from a second party, like uh, Simplest Metrics. As a matter of fact, they've gotten so big that Altium, you guys know, if you do board design, if you're a designer, you know Altium. I believe Altium is their partner now. So they're using their 
simulation tool. Okay, uh, TI uses Tina, but I think they're also now using Simplest Symmetrics. Simplest Symmetrics has gained a lot of traction. That's the one when I was the senior power supply guy at this last defense contractor I worked for. Well, I work for a new one now, <laughs> but the one before, um, I had them purchase uh, the Simplest Symmetrics because it's so powerful, it's so great for power supplies because it doesn't have the discontinuity problem. There's a mixture of behavior models with, with enough nuts and bolts that you can get hardcore simulations, but yet still run fast and not run into uh, discontinuities. Although maybe there are some there. Now, Mike Englehart with his new Q-Spice, his analog simulation is way past that. The digital simulation, you're supposed to be able to take a whole program, put it in there. I think he even joked that it'll run faster in the simulation than it will in the circuit. <laughs> but, you know, I mean, anyway, it's gone a long ways. So the mixed mold is, it's not mixed mold, it's just native mold now. It's like just native to the machine. So the other thing is power. There's emphasis for, like I said, all those discrete parts. So he can do all those power simulations and no problem, no discontinuities. So convergence, things converge like they're supposed to. They don't, you know, have these discontinuities, okay? So I'm really excited about this new program. Now the thing I'm, you know, I'll get used to it, I guess, but his interface is Volkswagen. It's very simple, very plain. He doesn't want to bog down the thing. Hey, if you're serious about doing simulations, you'll you'll learn his tool. <laughs> now, microcaps much more friendly, more, much more intuitive. Okay, so if you're very new, you could use get his program, start picking it up, learning it. I I'm gonna if you guys want, I'll start using his tool and and doing simulations like I could do with microcap. I need to do more microcap tutorials as well. But if you want me to do tutorials with Q Spice. I'll do that. Give me your comments below and we can learn together. Okay, I played with it a little bit. I'm like, wow, it's pretty cool. So I'm gonna show you that too, okay? So let's come over. I'm gonna show you LT Spice for those who haven't seen it. And I'm gonna show you Q Spice. I'm gonna show you like a, a DC DC converter, which is very similar in both tools. And, but I'm gonna show you how they're different. <laughs> and it'll open your eyes. You'll go, wow. This Q Spice is going to be something else. So if you are an LT Spice user, I know LT Spice people are like hardcore. Man, when you read the stuff in the comments, it's so funny because, um, like for me, I have Tina on my computer, I have LT Spice, I have Simplest Symmetrics. So whichever tool I need, I use. As a matter of fact, one time, okay, at Renaissance, Intercell, I'm designing a circuit for... Um, for this one power supply, okay, and it had an AC. Is I'm bringing an AC voltage, got to convert to DC, go through an isolation transformer, and then put out a bunch of outputs, okay. So I'm going to use um, I'm going to use a PFC converter, active power factor correction, and then I'm going to use uh, active clamp forward converter. So I was like, wow, okay. I went to Renaissance. Well, well actually, back in the day. Back a few years ago, it was uh, Intercell. That used to be Harris Semiconductors. Harris used to be a hardcore military company, right? So they turned into Intercell like everybody changes their names. You know, like everybody's changing their names. And now they're uh, called Ren now Renaissance by Intercell. So anyway, they had a schematic. You used to be able to, it's so cool with Intercell, you could go and you could take... I think they had the PFC part, okay? So you could, but I didn't want to use their part for, for, their part's a good part, but in this case, I wanted to use, I think, the Texas Instrument part, okay? So I went to their thing and I go, well, okay, cool. They've got a PFC, you know, simulation tool. The controllers, you don't have to simulate with the same controller that you're going to use, guys. The controller has a feedback loop. I mean, there's certain functions in it, but if you're, the problem is, is a lot of people doing DC-DC converter simulations, they call themselves power supply engineers, but you're not. You're really not a power supply engineer if you're doing DC-DC converters. I'm sorry to say that, but you're not. You're a, 
a voltage regulator designer, that's much different than being a switch mode power supply engineer where you're doing tran if you're doing transformers or isolation, yeah, you're a power supply guy. But if you're not, you're not you're a DC DC converter. A lot of FPGA guys, digital guys will do DC DC converters and I hear them sometimes tell me, yeah, I'm a little bit of a power supply guy. I'm like, well, kind of no. <laughs> The board layouts are so much more complex when you actually have to do a power system with isolation transformers and all that kind of stuff. Anyway, I'm not trying to bust your chops, but I'm just saying that things get serious, okay? So saying that you have to use LT Spice because they have an LT uh, model of their part, no, you don't. You can use anybody else's circuit, put inductors uh, around a buck or whatever it is, boost, and you can simulate the input capacitors, out capacitors, output capacitors, the transistors, the inductor, all that stuff with the right, with the same switching frequency is essentially going to work the same way. Okay. I mean, yeah, you can argue with me and all that kind of stuff, but it's, if you, if you can't do that, then, then yeah, I can show you how. <laughs> Anyways, um, I took the inner seal tool that gave me a schematic and I simulated it, came out with my, the inductor capacitors and all those kind of parts. And then when it came to the controller with the peripheral parts around that, you know, the the um, support resistors, capacitors I need to set the frequency and all that. Yeah, then I designed that just using a calculator coming up the value of the parts. Uh, or maybe the spreadsheet that they had, the TI had. But So I used the TI chip around this thing I simulated in the inner cell thing, okay? Then I went vice versa. Tina had an active clamp four converter in there. And I was like, wow, that's awesome. Um, I'm gonna use that to simulate the inner cell part because I wanted to use, or maybe it's analog device part. I forget now, I've, I've used them all, but I used their active clamp four converter simulation tool and I might be getting it mixed up, I forget. Anyway, I used one for one and one for the other and just swapped out the controller chips and everything is fine. Everything's hunky-dory. So anybody that thinks you have to have LT Spice to simulate LT parts, you don't, okay? Their parts are behavior-based. So you can build your own behavior-based components. You can put um, an oscillator to drive the gates. You can put an op amp in there with some feedback if you want. So anyways, um, it's behavior-based parts, okay? Q-Spice is looks to me like a very impressive tool. So, uh, yeah, I I have my micro cap that I kind of use for general purpose, but then I use, you know, other people's tools for, for when they have a circuit or a model made in their tool. If I, if it's, if it's just easier to simulate in their tool versus bringing it over in the library in a micro cap, I just do it that way. Okay. I use Intusoft. I've used uh, workbench. I, I don't use Workbench anymore, but uh, I've used so many different tools. If you're only an LT guy and only using LT, open your world up, guys. <laughs> and I'm telling you, Q-Spice, you'll pick up fast because it looks the same. It, it operates very similarly. So, whew. Okay. Sorry. I got kind of on a ramp. Should take a break here. Commercial break, please. Whew. Okay, sorry about the rant. I was trying to make this video short, but you know me. I have a hard time doing that. All right, guys, so uh, let me just fill in a few holes I might have left out. Um, where did Quervo come from? I've never heard of him until I heard... I. So I, I've been kind of fond of this Michael Englehart thing a little bit, okay? Yeah. All right, guys, so um, back in 2015... Triquint and RF Micro, they got together and they merged, okay? So maybe one bought the other, I don't know. Anyway, from what I understand, they merged together in 2015. And then soon after that, I believe, they bought um, United Silicon Carbide. So they have Silicon Carbide fits now. So anyway, so those three companies are together now, and that's who Mike's working for. And so maybe we'll see a new shirt come out and it'll be Q-Spice, okay? I'll put links down below for Q-Spice. You can get it for free. So it's free just like LT Spice. So yeah, I think what I think happened is that 
you know, companies don't like to make too many changes when they buy each other, right? So they don't want to upset all the employees. They try to pretend everything's going to go like nothing's changing. Oh, we're going to change payroll. We're going to move your guys' payroll to our payroll. But, oh, and your benefit package, you know, is going to be our benefit package now. So things are change. Yeah, your vacations, now it's called PTO. You know, that kind of thing. They do that over a year, couple years, right? That's kind of you know, typical from what I've seen. Um, and then a lot of times they try to get rid of the high paid engineers. I'm seeing that myself. <laughs> so they don't respect the knowledge and the experience of the engineers have been around for a while. They don't, you know, they're, they're looking at bottom dollar kind of stuff, right? And they're like, wow, you know, we like to pay our engineers in this zone and we got these outliers. So, uh, you know, that Mike guy, geez, he's making as much as a CEO. Oh, he's making more? Oh, crap, he's double? <laughs> that guy's gone. I don't know. So my guess, something like that happened. So this new Corvo company, they got three companies together now, and they're like, hey, you know what? Uh, we need models made of all our parts. You know, we really... We, to get our name out there and to make it easier for people to use our parts, we want... Hey, what if we had an LT Spice? What if we had a library of all our discrete parts and all our DC DC converters? Boy, that would make somebody like us take off. <laughs> so they saw, you know, the advantage of hiring somebody with experience and knowledge and all that stuff and that could do that for it, right? So somebody short sightedness opened a door for Mike to to do something new. And so something new and something special. I think this is gonna be a big thing for the engineering field. I think this Q Spice is gonna be a big deal. So I'm pretty excited about it. And I think, I imagine you guys are too. And if you're a hardcore Spice user, you might have withdrawals a little bit, but just download it, play with it a little bit, and eventually you'll kind of get over it. And, and you'll be okay. <laughs> you know, there'll be like LT Spice meetings, you know, where people get together and say, yes, I'm an LT Spice user. <laughs> but now I got Key Spice, so I'll be okay. So, I don't know. What do you guys think? That's kind of my take on it. Uh, like I said, it's a story of fiction and fact. Uh, some fact, some fiction. Who knows which is which? But... I want to come over and just show you quickly what the softwares look like, okay? So you can see the difference. So let's just do that. All right, guys. Like I said, the you know, it's kind of volkswagen -y. There's not a lot of frills, but it's a powerful machine. So let's take a look. All right, guys. So if you're familiar with LT, you're familiar with this page right here. Here, I'll just stretch this out. I didn't want to really fill up the whole screen because of some other reasons. But anyway, so... It gives me a note down here. It shows me the part. Here's the little DC to DC converter. And look, I can go up here and right click on this. And look, the inductor. I can change all these things. It actually has a, a coil craft manufactured part. It's not an ideal inductor. It's an actual part. So I can change those parameters. Uh, let's look at a resistor. Okay, pick a standard percent value. So I can go to one of these guys. So... It doesn't seem to let me put just a tolerance in there, right? And then capacitance, same thing. I can put all these values in there. I can pick one from the database. And what else? Let's go to a voltage source. So, okay, so I can put series resistance or I can go to advance and I can do all kinds of stuff in here, okay? I can put different, whoops. I can put different types of, you know, sources and it'll open up things that I can fill in, okay? So that's what you get. Oh, but the most important part, this guy, let's look at the guts of this thing. Oh yeah, it doesn't let you see the guts, but it does let you see a test fixture. Let's go to that. Wow, look at that. It's pretty much the same thing as I have up here. <laughs> Instead of a current source for load over here on the right I just have resistor other than that man doesn't it look similar so this is my test fixture so I can I can look at the behavior of this by playing with this test fixture but I can't see what's going on inside this 
That's what's always bugged me. Texas Instruments, people like the other companies, you can you can see what's inside their thing. On semi, whatever. Okay. All right, so let's go to Q Spice. Q Spice. All right, guys, here's Q Spice. Looks pretty similar, huh? A little bit more dressy. At least I have this little symbol and IP browser it's called over here. So uh, look, here's Corvo, JFET 6. Here's some behavior based stuff. So it's, they're honest. They say it's behavior based. And look, when I click on one, it shows me this little part down here. Okay. Now check this out. If I go to this resistor, I'll right click on it. And, it, and look, I have more stuff I can do. I have more options. I can go to this attribute thing. I can show symbol properties. So there we go. Now I can see all these uh, properties like I could before, but maybe a, a little bit more, right? And now if I go to the inductor, it swaps to the inductor there. I don't have to keep on right, you know, doing the thing I did before. Now I can just go click on each part and look at it. It's kind of nice, right? Right? Okay. So now look at these statements down here, dot transient, dot plot. So I'm going to plot the V out right over here. And I'm going to plot current and L1, which is this guy right here. Now look at this part. Oh, here, let's look at the voltage source. See what it looks like over here on this list. Okay, so there we go. Now what about this part? Let's click on this and see what happens. Oh, it says enter schematic. And look, I have other options too. But let's go enter schematic. Holy smokes, look at that, guys. Look at all the guts inside there. These red things are the pins. And all this stuff is what's inside that block. Look at all these discrete components, current sources, all kinds of things. Here's the drive chip for these two FETs out here. And you know what's really cool about this? Check this out. I can actually hit the simulation Okay, it's simulating things, right? Now, let me go to that. Here, I'll come over to this part, and I'm going to say, oh, I want to, I want to, I want to see what's going on right here. So I could click on that, and then go back to the simulation. Okay, and I just clicked on this guy right here, and now look, it shows me these things on the simulation. Isn't that cool? Now, I can zoom in on this stuff right here, and let's zoom in a little bit closer, and I wonder if I can see what this is going on down here, this little spike thing. Let's zoom on that a little bit closer. Boy, look at that. And you can see the little dots where it's taking data points. So, really cool, right? All right, so let's go back. I never simulated LT, so let's go back and look at that. Okay, here's LT. I have the running man. And there's a simulation, and I can go click on things. All right, so here's the simulation window. Now I can put these windows side by side and go click on things, you know. I click on the inductor through this, or the current through this inductor. And there we go. And I can zoom in the same way. So you see how they operate very similarly? All right, guys, so they operate very similar, right? You have statements to run the simulations. You can zoom in the same way. A lot of the, uh, you know, intuitive functions with QSpice is there because if you use, if you use the LT Spice, it'll be intuitive to you because you understand the logic or the way it works. And so QSpice will be easy to learn. But what will be cool and it'll blow your mind is is when you look at a behavior-based model, what you think that little yellow block is and think you can't see what's going on inside there and realize that you can go inside and click the switchy node inside there, which the other one, you don't know where it is. So, but when you can see down inside that behavior mode, now the drive to the two FETs look like a, a drive chip that was probably behavior-based, you know, but it gave you all that other stuff. So I think, yeah, you get what I'm trying to say is that you have more access to the nuts and bolts, what's going on. And also you have those switches in there. You could probably go in and replace those switches with FETs. So let's say you were not using uh, 
a control chip that had the FETs built in that you're actually using one with outside FETs. Maybe use that model just to simulate your FETs and your inductor and you replace those with actual FETs. So haven't tried that yet. I think I'm going to try it. Let me know down below if you want to see those kind of tutorials. I think it's going to be exciting. We can learn together. Let me know what you guys think. I got so many different tools. I think I, I want to do a micro cap. I got to do a dip trace. Yeah, so I still want to do the, the other programs like TCAD and, and things like that as well. So what do you guys think? I could show you Tina if you're interested in that. I could show you the simplest metrics. I've got that on my machine. I've got an Apple. I can run Windows stuff. I can run Mac stuff. I can run everything. So, and it runs it great. <laughs> and it's not that. It's an older machine. It's an i5. It's not even i7. And yeah. So, what do you guys like? Uh, sorry I made this so long. You know, I've tried a couple times before and I'm going to give up and just print this one. <laughs> I guess I got to do some editing. Hey, where's that beer? Um, so I was talking and my voice was going in the glass and ringing. I hope you guys couldn't hear that, but it was, yeah, it was in my ear. So that's why I moved it. So, all right. Thanks for watching. Two thumbs up to my patrons as always. Um, thumb up to anybody wanting to use that super thank you button down there that YouTube added. It's a way to buy me a, a beer, a cup of coffee, <laughs> things like that. And uh, Or you just like the video. That's a big help. It's a free way to support the channel. Just give a like, share it. It really would be great to share it just so people can use, uh, you know, we can spread the word that Q Spice is here, that no worries about LT. You got Q Spice now, okay? And for any engineer that was stuck just using LT parts because that's all you could simulate, come on, guys. You can use any simulation tool. You don't need to use the LT behavior mode parts. But, yeah, anyway... All right, let me know what you guys oh, think. And so before I go, I want to give two thumbs up to Mike Michael Eng Engelhart for being a champion of us engineers, coming out with a new SPICE program that looks like it's, I mean, for power integrity guys, signal integrity guys, it seems like the kind of SPICE program simulation tool that we can really uh, hammer out the details. And so, yeah, it seems like he's covered all the bases and... He didn't disappoint last time, right? He might have had his hands tied a little bit because he was operating with behavior-based uh, components, but now he's got discrete components he's writing for. So I think we're going to see a whole new mic, and from what I, what it looks like, I think we, I think we're seeing it. And he's had 25 years, like he himself said, that he's learned a lot, and this is a spice program he wrote 25 years ago. So it's kind of sad that a guy like him. You know, probably got bumped to the curb from the new company coming in. Didn't appreciate what he did or appreciated it, but didn't appreciate it enough to keep him around. So that was good for us because now he's he's done something new. I could be totally wrong about what happened, and he could have left on his own, but it seems hard to believe, but yeah, he could have. Anyway, all right, guys, there you go. Hope you liked it. We'll see you next time.